and welcome again to a start-up of the car from the National Motor Museum, Bewley. And today we have the 1903 22 horsepower Daimler. Lord Edward Montague purchased this car because it was very similar to a car which his father, John Scott Montague, owned back in 1902, a 22 horsepower car similar to this. And in honor, honor of his uh, father's memory, he purchased the same type of car. This car is a regular competitor in the London to Brighton run and indeed has been driven by many celebrities including the late great Sterling Moss. The horsepower rating of cars of this period was a calculation of bore size and number of cylinders and this is rated at 22 horsepower. We have a car in the museum which is 24 horsepower under that rating but because of the design of the engine it's almost twice as powerful as this. It's a very strange car to drive actually because it doesn't rev very freely but it pulls very well so you don't actually feel that you're accelerating in the gear but the car is actually starting to pick up speed and then you listen to the engine tone and then you change gear and you do this gradual progression up through. It is capable quite happily of 35 miles an hour and as I say does the London to Brighton run uh, very easily and a big four-seater car as well. So, key points of this car, four-cylinder, four-and-a-half-litre engine, really, really weird cooling system which I will show you in a minute and it has a four-speed gearbox with reverse. The pedal layout is strange because the throttle pedal is in the centre and it goes through a transaxle and the actual the differential in the axle is under the driver's seat because if you come around and look here you'll see that this is chain drive which was quite common in the period it was a good way of transmitting the power through the varying angle as the back axle jumped up and down on those uneven roads so I'd like to show you under the engine so I'm about to pop the bonnet off now and then you can see the bits that make this car work There we have it. Now, a completely different beast to the Rolls Royce you may have seen in an earlier video. As I say, four and a half litre, four cylinder. You can clearly see two blocks of two cylinders. And it is an inlet over exhaust so the inlet valve is directly above the exhaust valve but there is no mechanical method of working the inlet valve and indeed I have an inlet valve here spare one the way this engine operates when the piston goes down creates a depression a vacuum it sucks this valve down and then when it comes up back up and starts compressing it shuts that's called an atmospheric inlet valve or automatic inlet valve and these chatter and rattle away and you'll hear it when it runs and the reason we have a spare is it's quite common for the valve to break this cotter pin hole here and the valve drop down and that's why we carry a spare it's a very common fault with this so as I said four cylinder this is the carburetor here around this side and if you'd like to come round You'll see all this pipe work, etc. This is a carburation here um, and through a throttle slide working in there. You'll see it's got a heat pipe to heat the, the air mixture as it's going into the engine. This drive here, this spring belt drive here, is for the oil pump, which drip feeds oil through these pipes down into various parts of the engine. 
this here is a part of the pressurization system because it this car does not have a fuel pump it has a pressurized fuel tank and you manually pump the pressure into the tank to start with and then it uses of all things the exhaust gases to through a thing called an exhauster to put pulses of air into the tank when the car's running if you want to come round to this side of the car I will show you the component parts of what's happening inside the cockpit here a very different beast from a 1914 Rolls Royce for sure this is the oil tank this is two of the drip feeds that's for the front and the rear main bearing you have an extra oil pump here which puts a shot of oil straight into the cylinder bores if you feel it's getting a bit tight or you've got a long hill to drive up and similarly with this gives another shot of end oil straight into the sump of the engine to top the engine oil up also you have these two drip feeds here which I'm turning on now and they drip for feed oil into the engine it's called a total loss oil system because all of the oil that goes into the engine if it doesn't get burnt drips out three pedals clutch in a conventional place the foot brake on the right hand side and the throttle in the center which can get a little confusing and then up here on the dashboard this is the advance and retard and hand throttle which you may remember a similar system being on the Rolls-Royce the pump over here on the other side is for pumping air into the fuel tank which is registered on this gauge and you'll see that pulsing when we run the engine and the ignition switch is up here so there we have it um, the 1903 Daimler, I am now about to start the engine. So we'll set the controls, we turn the ignition on here, we'll tar the ignition, bring a little bit of hand throttle there, and then I go around to the front of the car. And for those of you who saw the previous video, you remember I showed you how not to hold the handle, which is with your thumb wrapped around it, you hold it like this. Okay, so I'm coming round and giving it a swing. And there we go. This chain is running the distributor for the ignition climbing and if you look down you will see the, in, the exhaust mount. Daimler, regular London Price Run.